Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this series of videos, we're going to go through Angular Dart from the very beginning. In my previous videos, um, I always try to document learning new experiences, and now we're going to start with Angular Dart. I tried this about uh, about a year and a half, maybe almost two years ago, to do this, but I kind of came into a wall and I had to stop because I couldn't really go much further. And I've done that, unfortunately, for a couple of other types of, of um, video series. And I will get back to them as soon as my learning and understanding gets a little bit better. And um, one of the big problems I always have, I struggle with, is the documentation. Coming from a beginner's standpoint and jumping into some things like Angular Dart, uh, there's a lot missing. And I got to be honest, I don't know how people learn it because they almost already understand a lot of concepts that I don't understand and it's I'm struggling with it. Maybe I'm not, just not that bright. I mean, that's another option too, of course, or maybe it's both. And so we're trying to get these um, uh, concepts um, understood. And so if I, as soon as I understand these, I'll document them all in these videos. So if there's anybody out there who like me is struggling with the documentation, with the learning in and of itself, then maybe this will be helpful. Maybe not. I hope it is. Um, but if there is any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Um, if I don't know the answer, maybe at least we'll have some input and have some ideas in terms of where to get the answers themselves. Okay. So um, one of the big troubles that I always have is with learning from the very beginning itself. Um, if you don't know any programming at all whatsoever, I'm going to send you to my previous programs, um, uh, videos where you, where I start from the very beginning from the assumption that you know nothing about programming and we go from there, okay? I will assume that you know at least as much that's in my previous videos. If you've gone through my videos, I don't think anybody's gone through all my videos, but if you did, you will know just as much as I know. Um, so that's the extent. So if you are coming from another language or you have some experience or you have a reasonably even a somewhat understanding of Angular Dart, this might be too basic for you. So you might not be helped by this at all. Remember, this is just dot me documenting my learning experiences so that um, you know I use them for myself for a reference. And it may be helpful for people in the very, very early stages who don't know anything about Angular or even frameworks at all. Okay. So um, Angular Dart, what is Angular Dart? Um, well, specifically, what is Angular? Um, what is a framework? Let's start from the very beginning itself. A framework, basically, it's a bunch of code that you put together that has a particular purpose or function. It's a little bit vague, okay, but it has a particular purpose. Now, we know in um, Dart, there is a place pub. I think it's pub.dartlang.org. So that's where, and there's also places which you might, hang on, hang on. Okay, autocorrect is not good right now. Well, it is good, but it's not what I want. Then there's something like GitHub, okay? So we have places where people put a lot of software and a lot of packages, um, a lot of functions, a lot of classes inside of here. So are those frameworks? Well, not really, because Pub is basically where you throw everything. It's not a framework for a given purpose. Frameworks, typically, we talk about something for a given purpose. What are you trying to accomplish? For Angular, we're trying to create web applications. So there are other frameworks where you're not interested in web applications. You might interest. You might be interested in like a server application or some other type of application or some other something. But that's what a framework basically is. So Angular is the preferred, according to the um, uh, Dart developers, the, most of the Dart developers, I think that that's their official stance, is the preferred framework. So it's something where they just say, hey, if we're going to put all of our energy into one web application framework, it's going to be for Dart. It's going to be Angular for Dart. Um, and now there are several components to a web application, right? So there is the front end, and then there is the back end, the server. We went through the server very, very basically um, in a previous video series, Angular is only going to be for the front end. It has some characteristics, some mechanisms where you can communicate with the server, but it in and of itself does not have actual server capabilities. So let's just keep that in mind. Okay. Let's install Dart. I'm sorry. Uh, let's install. Here we go. 
Angular Dart. So empty folder. I'm just going to go here, stagehand, web, Angular, I think it's called. Okay, so pub get. This takes a little bit of time, not too, too long. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and create our first web application. And then we're going to have to actually run this. And if I knew how to edit very well, I would probably edit this out and you wouldn't have to sit around waiting, but um, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, some of my tools aren't working super well. So sometimes my videos I can edit and sometimes I'm eh, not doing so hot. So let's get working on this. Oh, by the way, this is the, one of the nice things about um, Angular Dart is that it's the setup in TypeScript, I see sometimes some tutorials and they, they go on about how to set it up this, you do this, you do this. It's like, whoa, that's it. That's the, okay, pub serve. I've just created the basic framework for an Angular Dart. We, it's called Angular 2. I think they just, the official name is now called just Angular Dart, okay? So pub serve, we're gonna go ahead and serve it and we're gonna go ahead and Play it right here. Build successfully. There's our first web um, Angular Dart web application. Let's just see. What do you need to do? I don't know. Um, nothing. Something? You know, um, just for the record, they changed this a little bit. Oh, something. Oh, there we go. So they, they changed this around a little bit. It was a it had a different purpose um, before, but um, stagehand they updated, and so that's what we're seeing now. All right, so that's our first web application with Angular Dart. Um, however, let's go back a little bit. I actually created another web application. So just to let you know, you could create any web application, and it doesn't you don't have to use Angular Dart. You could just do it from regular plain HTML and Dart code. And this is an example of it. Okay, so we have this. Um, I'm going to make a web application. Uh, let's click over here, index. And let's see, um, header, Angular Dart for those who have no experience in web frameworks or even any other type of framework. Then there's the name input element, um, age input element, and then there's a button element right here. So it's nice and simple, straightforward, right? And by the way, let's do a pub serve here. That's what it actually looks like, okay? And then the, the functionality, we're gonna instantiate the submit button, the age button, and the name elements themselves. And then name.onClick, when you click on it, it's gonna, that's gonna disappear, right? And then age, not, we're not gonna do anything with it, but when I do click on the submit button, window.alert, the name and the age, okay? So if I put uh, Richard and 10 and I hit submit, it says you are 10 years old, okay? Um, if I change this to nothing and then I put this um, hi, it, it, I don't really have a name there, so it's going to be blank like that. So you could put whatever you want inside of there. So that's a simple web application. Now let's take a look at it. There's several things. Why are we learning Angular then if we can do all this ourselves? Well, there's several problems with this. So number one, when you think about this, this web application is made up of several different types of elements, right? But the elements themselves don't have any meaning in and of themselves. For example, if I get this age and I put it way down here, so I have the name, submit, and age way down here, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Because you really need this number input element as an essential part of this particular web application, right? So it comes in a one big chunk. So you need either all of these elements or else the web application starts to fail, right? So what happens if you get like an image, like I want to put an image right here. Well, what can happen is if you don't do your CSS just quite correct, it'll put a gap inside here. So you put name, then they'll put like a uh, an icon, a image here, and then age will be down here. And if you want to put another 
piece of information on the side, the submit button may be down here or something like that. Then the user will look at it and say, what's the submit intended for? Is it intended for the image? Is it intended for the, what is it, right? So it's, it becomes very confusing. So that's one thing. It comes in one chunk. And that's why Angular is called modular. It's modular because it's not just talking about an element or a two elements or three elements. It talks about using these all elements, putting together and making it what we call a module. And a module is basically, the, the way I like to think about it is if you think of a, if you're going to put together a, a, like a Lego airplane or something, what you ideally would do is you would put together the body, then you would put together the wing, and then you would click the wings onto the body of the airplane. So if the w wing falls off and it breaks apart, you don't have to build the whole plane back up together again. You just build the wing together, and then you click it back onto the right main body of the airplane if it was built correctly. As opposed to if you built piece by piece by piece and the wing broke off, you kind of have to take the whole um, plane apart to put it back together again to see how all the pieces fit. All right, so that's the whole concept of making something modular. And this is the same concept here. So we talked about styling would be affected, can be affected, and you don't want it to be. You want this to be in one big chunk. Now, there's no styling in this particular web application for simplicity's sake, but that's the concept here. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, what if you want to expand it? Okay, so what if you say that uh, name Richard, age is 54. So if I say um, anybody over 55, under 55 is going to go to one website and anybody over 55 is going to go to the retirement age site or something like that. I, I better say 65, 65. Um, so re retirement age site or something like that. So I would expand this itself, but still, um, it is still the web application right here. It, it is still modular. So in order to expand it, I can add on top of this module, but if it wasn't a, a one module, I would have to just do a lot more code and make this a whole lot more messy. All right. So what are the benefits of using something like a framework like Android, um, like Angular? Well, number one, we, we, um, we, we talked about it. It's easier to use, right? So if, for example, oh, you know, I have another web application and I need something that looks just like this. What you would do is you would just get this module and you would copy it and paste it onto your new web application. Now, what if we d didn't do that? What we would have to do is we'd have to say, okay, well, let's make sure let's put these here. And let's make sure it's not affected by the CSS style. So let's go here. And then we have to say, um, and make sure are there are any other images that are going to get in the way. Okay, good. Then we have to go to main.dart. We got to go, okay, now we got to put all these inside of here. But what if there's like a huge millions of pages of web application? You'd have to find out, okay, where exactly is this going to be instantiated on the page? It may not be difficult. You could do a find type of function itself. Uh, it's probably somewhere here, fine, but it wouldn't be all that easy either, would it? And if you had little pieces that you want to put in, so let's just say um, if age is 64, I might have another um, on click, maybe put um, if age equals less than 64 or something like that. It may make it extremely complicated to simply copy and paste it from one place to the other, right? Um, it, number two, it's, it's, you don't, well, this is kind of the same idea. You don't have to worry about the styling or functioning. If it's a module and this is the function it has, moving it over can be nice and straightforward. And secondly, it's easier to debug. So if you think about it, if you have one problem right here or one problem right here, and let's just say that this is, again, a million pages itself of, of code, it's, which is very reasonable it might be more difficult to track these bugs down. So there's a problem, I copied it and pasted it, and I pasted it a little bit wrong because I, I, I chopped it right off of here. Where is that specific problem? Well, if you have lines and lines of code to look at, it makes it a whole lot more difficult, doesn't it? But if you had it nice and modular, there's just one chunk right here that I had to look at. If it's correct, it's correct, I'm done. But if there's a problem, I know exactly where to look at. It's to look at this particular module right then and there. All right. So that's the whole concept, the fundamental concept of Angular Dart. Make things modular. Let me pull up this one more time, actually, the Angular. This Angular um, web application. 
and we'll go to web index. So right here, we see, let me see. Okay, we're right here, we use, we created what we call a custom element. So instead of this being text input element, number input element, button input element, we, we put this together in a module to create a custom element where it represents everything. So this, as opposed to the previous video, I'm, I'm sorry, the previous um, uh, web page where it had three separate elements, this is just now one element. So imagine if this thing was a lot more complicated, all you have to do is look on the page, oh, where is this particular element? Oh, it's right here, my app. So it makes it nice and clean and easier to read. And so this points to and main.dart, that's a whole lot easier. We'll go over that in the future. And here is basically where your code actually is. So if you have any problem with your web application, it's not this one, of course, it's going to be So it's going to be right here. So if you have any problem with this particular web application right here, this is where you look and say, oh, where's the problem? Oh, here it is. It makes it a whole lot easier than going here and looking through pages and pages and pages of code, right? Now, the disadvantage, obviously, will be you might have pages and pages of pages of files right here or bunches of different files. But at least now you know where to look in terms of where the problem is. Look at the file. There is where the web application or the, the module of the web application is and we're good to go. All right. So that's the fundamentals of Angular Dart. There's a lot more we need to look through, but that's just the general concept of it, where I hope that when I look at it, I say, hey, that makes life probably a lot easier, not so much to build it initially, but in order to maintain it in the future, I think it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Okay. Thank you.